I'm Miss Marty Thomas Beard at the Danbury Railroad Museum. Welcome to Short Lines and Short Stories. Won't you please come inside? Today we're inside Main Central number 661. This caboose spent its working life on the tail end of freight trains in northern New England. Cabooses, like the 661, served as conductors home away from home as well as their office. As you can see, they were equipped with bunks, a water tank, and even a toilet. Hey! Oops! Welcome to the cupola! From up here, crews would keep an eye on the whole length of the train. They'd take shifts watching the freight cars, making sure that everything was running smoothly. At this part of the caboose, we have what's called an ice box. This is where the train crew would keep their food to stay cold. At home, you have a refrigerator. Here, the ice box would actually need a big block of ice to keep their food cold. On this side of the caboose, we have the stove. The stoves are heated by either oil, coal, or even wood. And the rail that goes around the stove is to keep the pots and pans from flying off the stove top when the train would take a very steep curve. Here we have the copper bottom sink. And now you know why we need such a large water tank. And here we have what is called thread. Nowadays, you don't see cabooses on the end of trains. What you do see is FRED, which stands for Flashing Rear End Device. Instead of a conductor talking to the engineer, now FRED talks to the engineer via computers. Here we have the desk where the conductor used to sit to do all the paperwork necessary for the running of the train. And now, I'd like to read to you The Caboose Who Got Loose, written and illustrated by Bill Pete. When Katie Caboose rambled down the train tracks, the engines were steamers with puffing smokestacks. She was a caboose who disliked being last, with an endless black cloud of smoke rolling past. It's not only too smoky, the caboose would complain. There's the jerks and the jolts of this noisy freight train. The engine up front always wore a big smile as he lumbered along from mile after mile. He was proud of his being so powerful and strong that he could haul a freight train a hundred cars long. So on he went chugging, no worry or care, leaving Katie Caboose in dark clouds of despair. Katie had little hope she would ever get loose or ever be anything but a caboose. I can wish, sighed poor Katie, what else can I do? If you wish hard enough, then your wish might come true. Often Katie would wish that someday could be something quiet and simple like a lovely elm tree or a ramshackle's barn all alone on a hill where the noisiest thing was a squeaky windmill. It might become lonely, she thought, way out there, but at least there's a view with a lot of fresh air. Whenever she passed through a small country town, Katie wished she could stop and just settle down and be one of the houses who sat in a row on a tree-shaded street and have no place to go. It's so restful, thought Katie, where one can relax, as she hurried and scurried on down the train tracks. What she wished most to be, much more than the rest, was a cabin she'd seen on a trip through the west, a little log shack half covered with vines, perched on a slope in a forest of pines. How perfect, thought Katie, as she hurried on by it, to live there in the trees was peaceful and quiet. But all the caboose could look forward to was a deep rocky canyon the train traveled through, where huge boulders leaned way over the tracks in towering top-heavy gigantic stacks. What's holding them up? Frightened Katie would wonder as the earth-shaking train went rumbling right under. If one should come loose and fall down upon her, it would squash Katie flat and then she'd be a goner. If she didn't get squashed, there was more to be dreaded, up the winding steep grades where the engine was headed. High up in the mountains were terrible ledges, where the track ran along only feet from the edges. The view was breathtaking, but after one look, it was so upsetting she shivered and shook. If she slipped off the track, then down she would go to be smashed into bits on the rocks far below. Then poor Katie received even more of a fright from a smoke-blackened tunnel as dark as the night. And she crept through the tunnel with a horrible thought. 
that far back in the darkness she'd suddenly be caught by caboose-eating monsters who lurked all about. They would gobble her up before she got out. Her trips always ended near a city somewhere, way out in a freight yard with smoke clouding the air, where a turmoil of trains made a great noisy rumble on crisscrossing tracks, an impossible jumble. The train came to a stop and the cars were unhitched. Then off to a sidetrack, the caboose was soon switched, where Katie could sit and take in the fine scenery with such lovely sights as a load of machinery. Coal cars and flat cars, lumber stacked on their backs, squealing carloads of pigs with snouts poking through cracks. They always left Katie in the midst of it all, while the engine received a complete overhaul. The huge engine at last had run down from the strain, from the 10,000 miles he had hauled the long train. Back in the roundhouse, men swarmed all about to check over and under him, inside and out, replacing old pistons and bolts that were missing, patching leaks in the boiler that made a loud hissing, cleaning rust from his piping that ran everywhere, checking steam valves and pumps in great need of repair. As Katie sat there through one long dreary night, staring up through the smoke at a red signal light, a small house appeared in the sky like a ghost, a shack of the switchman perched high on a post. I'd like to be you, said the shack very sadly. If I could trade places, I would very gladly. A caboose is what I've always wanted to be, for you have the best life from what I can see. Before Katie could think of some way to reply, all at once, a long freight train came thundering by. The next thing she knew, she was jerked and then jolted, then hitched to the train with a coupler bolted. As the train left the freight yard, poor Katie looked back to catch a last glimpse of the sad little shack. From now on, Katie promised, I shall never complain. I'll be a happy caboose at the end of a train and put up with the jolts and the train noise and the rest. All the smoke that rolls by or at least try my best. With her new point of view, she enjoyed the long ride. It was fun on a trip through the broad countryside. But when the train crept up a steep mountain grade, then poor Katie found she was still as afraid. And once more, she began to shiver and shake at the thought of the frightening curves she must take. Her unsteady wheels could cause her to slip which would suddenly put a quick end to the trip. It was a hot afternoon, so the going was rough, and the engine up front was in a puffing big huff. He groaned, what a day to chug up such a grade, on a bare mountainside without one bit of shade. When he came steaming over the very last hump, he lunged with a fury that made the cars jump. All the way back to Katie, who got such a jolt, that it snapped off a rusty old coupling bolt. She was free of the train. At last she was loose. And away down the track went Katie Caboose. On down the grade she flew faster and faster, straight for a curve and certain disaster. When Katie hit the curve she took off like a kite, high over the treetops on her first and last flight. That would quickly have ended poor Katie Caboose if it hadn't been for two towering spruce. The caboose became caught in a very tight squeeze between the tall trunks of two evergreen trees. At first she could hardly believe her good luck. What a wonderful place it was to be stuck. She thought she was dreaming. It couldn't be true. Here she was in the trees with a beautiful view. It's so perfect, sighed Katie. Yet, I'm really not free. I know sooner or later they'll come after me. And then, sure enough, up the mountains that night came a train with a crane and a powerful light. She could have gone leaping off here, came a shout. Like a great glaring eye, then the light searched about. It flashed past the trees down the steep rocky bluff, and it searched high and low, but not quite high enough or it would have soon spotted the missing caboose. 
but all they could find was a startled bull moose. Let's all call it quits, growled the boss to the crew. For all that I care, she's in Kalamazoo. Katie stayed in the treetops. No one ever found her, except for the squirrels and the birds all around her. At last she was free, just as free as the breeze. And how Katie did love it up there in the trees. And indeed, oh indeed, oh indeed, Katie did. To this day, Katie Caboo still lives peacefully in the woods. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you soon at the museum. The Danbury Rail Museum is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. If you'd like to contribute to our mission of preserving America's railroads, please visit www.danburyrail.org forward slash donate. The opening is scheduled to take place in summer of this year.